Hello, and welcome to this lecture today on the COVID-19 virus pandemic. Since the virus was first officially identified on the 16th of January 2019 in Wuhan, China, the number of COVID-19 cases has risen sharply worldwide, and hundreds of thousands of new infections are being reported every day. The virus is still ever-present in almost every part of the world and mutating and creating other strains. The global spread of COVID-19 is having a devastating effect on human lives and is representing an unprecedented shock for the world's economy. So, I'm going to start today by looking at some of the shocking facts and figures. According to the World Health Organization, from the second week in January 2021, there have been 99.8 million recorded COVID-19 cases and over 2.1 million COVID-19 related deaths worldwide. The figures show that the United States have the highest number of recorded cases of 26.3 million and 421,000 COVID related deaths, followed by India in second place with 10.7 million recorded cases and 154,000 COVID-related deaths. The UK is in fifth place, with 3.6 million confirmed cases and just over 100,000 COVID-related deaths. Unfortunately, at this time, all cases and deaths are still rising. OK, now on to a definition. It's important to begin with a clear definition of COVID-19, this is because many media reports and people have used coronavirus and COVID-19 interchangeably. But this is not true, as in fact one is actually a subset of the other. Coronavirus actually refers to a handful of diseases. The term refers to a group of viruses that are known to cause respiratory issues. So even though many are referring to the illness circling around right now as coronavirus, that's not actually the name of the disease. This is, technically speaking, like using the term dog to describe a Labrador. It's important to note that coronaviruses are an extremely common cause of colds and other upper respiratory infections. Some examples of previous coronaviruses include SARS and MERS. So, COVID-19, short for Coronavirus Disease 2019, is a novel coronavirus, meaning it's a new type of coronavirus that was not previously known or understood by health experts. The important point here is that COVID-19 is the illness caused by the novel coronavirus. The key difference of this virus to other coronaviruses is that it deceives the body in the early stages of infection through tricking the immune system into thinking everything is OK. A basic level description would be our body cells start releasing chemicals called interferons once a virus is detected in the body, and this warns the immune system. But COVID-19 has an amazing capability to switch off this chemical warning system, so you don't even know you are ill. There are no symptoms at first, and often by the time you realise you have the virus, you are fully infected. Moreover, showing no symptoms means the process of passing the virus on to another person is incredibly easy as it's undetectable. OK, let's move on to the key symptoms of COVID-19. Some people infected with the COVID-19 virus have no symptoms, when the virus does cause symptoms, common ones include fever, body ache, dry cough, fatigue, chills, headache, sore throat and loss of appetite. In some people, COVID-19 causes more severe symptoms like high fever, severe cough and shortness of breath. COVID-19 also affects brain function in some people. Specific neurological symptoms include loss of smell, inability to taste, dizziness, confusion, seizures and strokes. It's actually the respiratory problems that are the main factor for the high number of fatalities. COVID-19 can cause lung complications such as pneumonia, 
and in the most severe cases, acute respiratory distress syndrome and sepsis. So, a common question is why do some people get very sick from COVID-19 while others do not? It may have to do with interferons. New research by Gothenburg University in Sweden suggests that up to 14% of people who develop severe COVID-19 have an inadequate interferon response. In some people, this happens because their own antibodies mistakenly attack and neutralise their interferons. Others have a genetic mutation that prevents their body from producing enough of a certain type of interferon. However, there is plenty of evidence that suggests the risk for severe illness with COVID-19 increases with age, with older adults at highest risk. For example, people over 65 are at a higher risk of severe illness than people below 65. The greatest risk for severe illness from COVID-19 is among those aged 80 or older. All of this is supported by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that 8 out of 10 COVID-19 deaths reported in the US have been in adults 65 years old and older. Now I will move on to how COVID-19 is spread. COVID-19 spreads mainly from person to person. This can happen between people who are in close contact with one another. A person infected emits aerosols when they talk or breathe. Aerosols are infectious viral particles that can float or drift around in the air for up to three hours. Another person can breathe in these aerosols and become infected. This is why everyone should cover their nose and mouth when they go out in public and follow the two-metre rule. COVID-19 can also spread from contact with infected surfaces or objects. For example, a person can contract the virus by touching a surface or object that has the virus on it and then touching their own mouth, nose or possibly their eyes. This is why everyone should wash their hands with an antibacterial soap or gel after touching any surface. A general rule is to be aware that COVID-19 can survive on hard surfaces from between 3 to 5 days and on soft surfaces for up to 24 hours, so it's probably easier to just assume everything has COVID-19 on it and always take necessary precautions. OK, my next point is mutations. Like other viruses, COVID-19 cannot survive without a living cell in which to reproduce. Once it enters human cells, COVID-19 replicates copies of itself, which go on to infect other cells. Sometimes a mistake is made when the virus is replicating. This is called a mutation. Mutations have led to new COVID-19 variants. One example, called B117, was first detected in the United Kingdom. Another, called B1351, originated in South Africa. Interestingly, both variants share a key mutation called N501Y on the spike protein that allows the virus to bind more tightly to human cells. This mutation is much more contagious than previous COVID variants. Fortunately, they do not appear to be deadlier. Moving on to vaccines. In the last month, two vaccines have been authorised to be used for immunisation in the UK. These are Oxford-AstraZeneca and Pfizer-BioNTech. Oxford-AstraZeneca is a vaccine which was developed by the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca. The vaccine works by delivering the genetic code of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein to the body's cells. Once inside the body, the spike protein is produced, causing the immune system to recognise it and initiate an immune response. This means that if the body later encounters the spike protein of the COVID-19, the immune system will recognise it and destroy it before causing infection. Interim results from trials showed that the vaccine can prevent 70.4% of COVID-19 cases across all age groups. The vaccine has also shown to prevent 73% of cases in individuals with at least one underlying health condition. 
Pfizer BioNTech is a COVID-19 mRNA vaccine developed by Pfizer and BioNTech. It contains the genetic code or mRNA of the spike protein, which is found on the surface of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Once inside the body, the spike protein is produced, causing the immune system to recognize it and initiate an immune response. The Pfizer trial reported that the vaccine can prevent 95% of COVID-19 cases. The trial also showed that the vaccine provides similar protection in people of all ages, races and ethnicities. Of the big two vaccines, the Oxford AstraZeneca is currently the cheapest to produce and, crucially, it can be stored at a standard temperature between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. The Pfizer vaccine needs to be stored at minus 80 degrees Celsius, which limits the places it can be administered. OK, so this leads me to the final section. The future or post-Covid. The world after COVID-19 is unlikely to return to the world that it once was. Everything depends on how long it takes to achieve herd immunity and how effective these vaccines are on dealing with new strains and mutations of COVID-19. So much has changed over the last year with working from home, shopping online and experiencing lockdowns. It's incredibly difficult to see all of these things changing quickly. Governments have borrowed heavily to offer financial support to businesses and provide medical supplies that a global recession is imminent. The pandemic has created mass unemployment, business bankruptcy and homelessness, so getting back to normal seems a distant dream. Generally, there is a lot of negativity surrounding the future challenges of post-COVID-19, but, and this is an important but, the human race is incredibly resilient, ingenious and innovative. And we have shown through the pandemic our ability to evolve, adapt and transform. And I personally have every faith that we will come out of this crisis with renewed hope and focus for a better, fairer world. Thank you.